When we think about threat intelligence, threat intel is really two sides of the same coin. So the human side that we've spoken a lot about today, the understanding of the threat, allows us to talk about it, allows us to write intel products that you can see as the tips and TAs in Tejas. The other side of that coin is the systemic side of threat intel. So how do we turn that into structured data and things that we can apply to Tejas that becomes detections, alerts, and investigations? If we look at this pyramid, so this is commonly known as the pyramid of pain. Some of you may have seen it before. This really outlines the kinds of things that we can detect in a platform like Tejas. This is designed to show you the difficulty for a threat actor to evade detection. So the higher up this pyramid you go, the more effective your detections are, the more longer lasting they are. So if we look at the green part, that's what we use tactic graphs for. The yellow part is where we use endpoint and network signatures. And Clay Moody, who's on right after me, uh, is gonna talk about how our detection research team fuels those sides of the detections. I'm gonna talk about the bottom part of the pyramid of what we call indicators. So to domain names, IP addresses, and hash values. Now, typically on this kind of slide, why we're showing them in the red is because they're often seen as low value detections. They've got a very high turnover rate, lots of noise, lots of false positives when you try and detect indicators. But what our job is, is to make sure that the indicators that we're feeding into Tejas are really high value so that we're detecting the things that we need to. So indicators play a really important part in a holistic defense posture. So what makes a good indicator? Most indicators that you see are really a record of historic activity. So it's something that happened in the past that somebody saw and noted down. But what we want to use indicators in a detection capacity is really how are they effective at detecting activity that might happen in the future. And there's really three dimensions to that. The first is timeliness. So how recent is this indicator? When was the last observation of that indicator showing real badness? Fidelity, is this a true high fidelity indicator that if you see it means there's definitely something bad or is it low fidelity which could be shared and mixed in with other things so it may be an indicator of badness but it may also be something legitimate and then the third really important part is context so you, once you get an alert or an indicator says I fired many people just block those indicators and say job done but really what you need to figure out is what caused the communication to that domain name or IP address and to really answer that question you need to know what the indicator is so what malware family is it associated with what threat group things like that so all three of these things play a really important part in deciding whether an indicator is good to use for security defense rather than just a historic record of something that happened.